from the Bassinite Bridge in North Carolina. Welcome to Fish to See. NC Electrician, this is for you. You requested a video on how we cook your tile. All of this week, this has been a pretty simple, straightforward task because the wind and the current has been agreeing. Today is different. Wind and current is opposing. Currently, just trying to figure out right now. I'm sitting right next to the pile, trying to figure out which way if the current or the wind is going to win the battle. And it's a stalemate, just about it. So. Thinking right here on this corner, this particular pylon has bumpers uh, around it, and some people put in ropes that they can put them tied to, but I don't like the usual because I don't trust the people lines. So, the best way to do it on these, with the bumpers on here at Grand Inlet, is just drop a, a single strand rope through the there's a little gap at the very corner of the uh, pile of the end. Just drop it down and make a couple of wraps through it. Just make sure it don't, there's actually a crack in it, so just make sure it don't come out of that crack. Still trying to figure out what the current and wind's going to do. So today it's hanging kind of funny because the wind and the currents are opposing and it makes it, you just have to see which one, you just have to go to each corner of the pile and just, you don't want to damage your boat is the main thing. And you're just pulling up to each corner and seeing where, where it's going to work the best because you want your boat to hang away from the pile. And, and I, ha I had a comment on another video last night that there was fines for hooking up these pylons. And I've not seen any evidence of that. There's no signs. Uh, heard nobody talking about it at the tackle shops. And some days every one of these pylons out through here is occupied and coastal patrols, uh, marine patrol and coast guard right by ride right by and wave so i'm not sure where uh, they got their information Thanks. from but so far i've not seen any fines being issued or signs or anything about any kind of information like that so but with that being said always follow up on current rules and regulations <laughs> before you do anything don't take my word for it do your own research and see what see what you can find out but that's a little quick on how we tie up these pylons and there's different styles of pylons out here on out towards the center there's pylons without the rubber bumpers on them so you can't drop the rope through and tie up on those you have to use one rope to go around the entire base of the pylon which is a good 70 feet by the time you get all the way around it, you tie a rope around the base, and then tie another rope to that that goes to your boat. And then on the other end, there's the pylons are smaller where you can get one rope around the whole pylon and then come down to your boat. So it just depends on 
there's three different styles out here at Oregon that you have to deal with. So you just have to pick your poison. I like this is about my favorite one to tie up to is the one we're on. And it's just got the rubber bumpers. It's pretty simple to tie to. Just make sure at the junction where that and we'll get Crane to show it better here in just a minute. There's a junction there. Make sure your rope don't slide out of that junction and your boat's gone. I had another comment on the video asking about how we almost sunk the boat out here. I mentioned it in that video, but I really didn't get into it. I sunk my boat because it was the beginning of the week, and at the beginning of the week, we historically have filled up the boat 100 gallons of gas on the boat and ran all week on that 100 gallons without worrying about putting any more in it. On that particular day, the water, the wind, and the waves were opposing once again. It made it incredibly rough right here. We tied up anyway, got up on the pile, catching sheep's head left and right. What we didn't realize was the extra weight of the 100 gallons of gas in the boat made the back of the boat not ride over top of the waves as it should or as it normally would. So every wave was coming over our transit. And our boat's old. And stuff's wore out on it. So the automatic village doesn't work at the moment. You have to manually turn it on. And the water was going down into our hull. We didn't realize it until I looked up and the back corner of the boat was less than an inch out of the water. And I was getting ready to have a boat at the bottom of Oregon Inlet. So that's how we about sunk the boat was too much gas. So now we just put 20 gallons of gas in it and it rides over top of all that chalk and nothing comes in the boat. So once you get tied up, we just put out a measuring thing, pliers, bucket, put pliers, measuring device, a couple rigs in a bucket and put it up on a pile and then get to it. And make sure you have a net because sometimes you get them big ones and a cooler. Because you don't want to have to get up and down every time you need to put a sheep set in the cooler. Right here is how he's talking about. See there's a crack that runs down through there and if your rope is not big enough it'll pull the weight of your boat will pull straight through that crack we're putting a lot of pressure on it right now trying to hold the boat here just run it down and out the bottom yeah. a couple times and then keep it and tie you and that's how you do it that's a nice one <laughs> a little bit yeah it's like it's one of the days where we have to pick at them that's the second keeper we've got out of four or five sheep's heads so it's gonna be a pick at them day it's all right we picked at them the day before yesterday and ended up with a nice mess old sea bass for inshore. I'm actually going to measure it. Actually not. Look at the white on this this thing's fins. I thought it looks more white than Look white. Look at that. That's pretty. Every fin, I'm going to take them to the sunshine. Every fin has this white striping. That's pretty cool. The rig we're using is the uh, 65 pound high visibility braid swivel, 50 pound fluorocarbon. You took me under. <laughs> 50 pound fluorocarbon. Dropper loop tied into it. And I got a snap at the bottom with a two ounce weight and then a number one live bait hook for the hook. And the sand flea is what I'm using for bait. These sheep's head like to eat from this side of the sand flea, so I make sure my hook point is sticking out from where the legs are. 
Oh, out the back. Just like that. And you'll make sure to start out with at least a gallon of sand fleece because we go through a bunch. You'll lose five fleece for every one sheep's head. Right, here's a prime example of what they like to do. Yeah. See how it's hauled out the leg, the innards, and just left the shell. So her hook point sticking out where it should be, just some. Too little to hook. Too little fish to hook. When you get ready to drop it down, so it's just going to go down as close to the edge of the pile as we can get it. So surface of the water and I let it out about 12 feet to start out with. Now I'm feeling the pile with my weight. So now I'm gonna hang out right there for a minute. I'm about 12 foot deep right here on this first drop. I'm constantly jigging it just a little bit. To, uh, the only reason I'm jigging it is I like to feel pressure pulling back against me. If I feel the pressure pulling back against me, I'll set the hook. Like that. But it bit right there. It hold out a lot of the sand flea. But I still got a little bit of flea left in there, so we're going to send them back down. About four feet. Work it down that pile, and I'm feeling it tick all the way down. Put that pressure on it. Ah, oh, he bit it again. And now you finish the job. So that's why you have to have a bunch of fleece. That's a keeper. 11 inches. Let's see if I can get one. Watch that fish go back up in there. Get back out here. <laughs> Get over here. Uh, oh, more back, mortal throw, mortal combat throw back. <laughs> there you go, 12. The bite's picking up. Current's picking up, bite's picking up. That's how it goes. bleeding them so dad's here stabbing his you trying to get back up under there should keep her it's 12 inches Identified a new species, green nose sheep's head. It's Chris got. <laughs> I, I dropped mine to the sand and just got a bite. Wow. Tender eyes that was stung him. Keep her up, but I was in the sand too and just got hit. Kind of unusual. I'm gonna drop it back to the sand again. When I go in the sand, you get all the black back. She was in the sand with that one though. Let's see 
Was? Das Tieren. Drop it all the way down. Hardly ever do that for sheep's head, but we'll see. That's the bottom. Let's see. Felt like a black sea bass bite. For a decent one, Chris. He was just stuck on the edge. I could see him just sitting like this. <laughs> it's hilarious. That was all the way on the bottom again. Pretty one. That was about 12 inches. He's got some <laughs> Frustrate me. Probably little. Probably. Or it might be a big one, who knows better. Might be a big one just messing with me. I'd say it got it all for you. Okay. Yep, sure did. Probably ripped mine off too. There you go. <laughs> it might be as black as best, I don't know. No, I'll play that spot. That is a keeper sheep's head. I think. Oh, come on. Just hooked. Don't wiggle. Ha! Got got you. Yeah. That one's close. I chum them up and Crane catches them. What you do? Cause I, I just missed that one and Crane caught it too. Now I'm not even getting a bite. Probably ain't got no bait. Break it. Most time broke one. Probably black. Either that or a tiny fish head or a sheep head. I'll call it a fish head. <laughs> 
Guys, looks like this is gonna be the last sheep's head of the day. Throwing him back in the water. Let him get a little bit bigger. But turned out to be a decent day. We got, I don't know, 13 sheep's head in the box, I do believe. Not no huge ones today, unfortunately. But some meat. Uh we're gonna make a point to show this is the week of October. 20 ish and there's people tied up on every single pylon almost down through here yeah, every pylon's got somebody now that the fishing the Oregon Inlet fishing uh, Bonner, old Bonner Bridge now you can't moor to it it's got a sign on it that says no mooring and no spear fishing but these out here have no signs Everybody comes out here and does it. As far as we know, it's legal. Yeah, as far as we know. So, until we find out otherwise, this is where we'll be. Earlier, we answered your question, NC Electrician, on your other video about, uh, or our other video about tying up. So, we approach the piling from down current, approach it, take your time, figure out where your boat's going to hang, and then we just wrap it up on this corner right here and just make sure your rope don't slide out that gap and on the ones that don't have the bumper you'll just take a rope all the way around this and this is long i mean this is several feet long on each side wrap a rope all the way around it and hook from that rope to your boat with another so that that takes a lot more rope that's why we like these and those that are there's some down that way that are split and they're small enough you can just wrap a rope around it and go to your boat but yeah that's pretty much it we got several obx videos coming up soon uh, more sheep's head fishing catch clean cooks of all sorts and we went out and deep dropped so we'll have a video of that coming up shortly we hope y'all enjoyed this it's just one of the ways we do fishing out here at the outer banks come down and try it out thanks for subscribing and if you haven't subscribed like always click that red subscribe button we need y'all we need your support so go click it now <laughs> before the video ends come on go click it thanks for watching thanks for sticking with us we'll catch you on the next one let's see if we can beat the birdies landed over here <laughs>